Hello and welcome to Pia Tia, the German engineer. Explains, oxygen not included. Yes, today we are back with another episode and you probably already know what we are going to talk about. And yes, of course, it is the humble Geo Tuner down here on the bottom. That is a building that is highly underutilized in my opinion and I'm here to change that. So, let's take a closer look what a Geo Tuner actually does. And here we are back with our overlay turned back on and we have five Geo Tuners sitting right here. So let's take a quick look at one of them. So let's take a look over here where it says information. It increases the temperature and output of an analyzed geyser. Yes, that is highly important. Not only the output, but also the temperature goes up. And of course down here, multiple Geo Tuners can be directed at a single geyser anywhere on an asteroid. And that is what makes a Geo Tuner so powerful in my opinion, because we can direct up to five of them. It says you're multiple, but the actual number is five at a single geyser. And the distance between the Geo Tuner and the geyser does not matter. You can build these things here anywhere you want. Another requirement is it has to be inside of a laboratory. And let's take a look into our room overlay. For a laboratory, we need two science buildings, a light source and no industrial machinery. And of course, we have a minimum and a maximum size. But that is literally all it takes to get a laboratory up and going. And also it gives us an efficiency bonus. So we have the bonus from the light and also another bonus coming in from the laboratory, which makes it highly efficient to work on anything research related within a laboratory. But let's take another look into our information tab right here because we have another requirement and that requirement is power 120 watts per geo tuner which really isn't that bad considering that you're not going to build something like this here at the beginning of the game but towards the mid or towards the end stage. So power should really not be a problem anymore at that point. And there's one more thing that we need, which is an input material. Currently we have none and that is totally fine. But what those are, we will talk about very shortly. So let's take a look how these things here work. On each and every one of our five here, I'm going to select our Cobalt Volcano. Let's see here. Yes, this one is already selected. And now when I play the game, absolutely nothing is happening. And the reason for it is that these here are buildings that do require dupe labor. Therefore, we need a duplicate. And right here we have our duplicate Marie and Marie currently has no skill points. But even without skill points, Marie can come by and load in our recipe. And we can see this nice animation here. Yes, the Geo Tuner shows us actually what kind of geyser we are selecting. In this case here, of course, it's our Cobalt Volcano. And now Marie is done and she can't do anything else. So let's take a look into the skill screen. And right here we are and we can see Marie has absolutely nothing going on. So let's give her what she needs. We need advanced research and field research and you can immediately see it. Field research gives us plus two science, geographical analysis and also geotuner usage. And that is of course what we are after. Now Marie has the appropriate skill and we can see here the Geotuner says experimentation needed and of course each and every one of them says the same thing. So let's play the game and let's see what Marie does. Now the Geotuner says compiling data and that is what Marie is doing right now. She is gathering some data about our geyser and then hopefully she will tune it up. But let's wait it out until the first one is done and that should happen any second now. Yep, there we go. And Marie will, of course, immediately move on to the next one. And now it says here, data remaining 100%. Target is not erupting. So let's take a look at our volcano. And right here is our Cobalt Volcano. And of course, you can see it if you have watched my channel before that I use my wonderful Volcano Tamer version 2.0. If you want to know how to build this thing here, there's a video for it. And there's a link in the description for it. And of course, a card in the top right. But let's take a look at our Cobalt Volcano. It already says you're geotuned 1 out of 5. Once again, telling us that 5 is the absolute maximum. Now I will select our volcano and we will take a look over here. It says your Cobalt 10.3 kilograms at 2276.9 degrees Celsius. But those are not the original numbers. If I hover with the cursor over it, we can see 1 out of 5 geotuners targeting this geyser are amplifying it. And total geo tuning is plus 1713.59 grams per second and plus 50 degrees Celsius. And that is only one out of five geo tuners. And what that means is that we are getting per geo tuner an extra 50 degrees Celsius in output heat and also an extra 1.7 kilograms per second in cobalt every time it erupts. Isn't that nice? So I would say let's wait for the other four to be turned on as well and we will take another look. And now we can see it. It says geo tune five out of five, which means Marie 
Marie has finished her job. So let's click on it and let's take another look. And oh my goodness. All of a sudden, our one cobalt volcano right here is putting out 17.1 kilograms per second at 2476.9 degrees Celsius. And if I hover with my mouse over it, we can see each and every one of our Chiu tuners is putting another 1.7 kilograms per second in there, giving us a total of 8.57 kilograms per second and a total of 250 degrees Celsius in output heat. Isn't that amazing? And that took basically no work at all. So what does this help us for? And is the extra heat not bad? Well, in this particular case right here, it really isn't because all the extra heat does is it heats up our steam more and therefore our steam turbines are going to put out more heat. But the next thing that I want to talk about is the different input materials that I mentioned earlier. Right here, I have five different vents, geysers, and of course volcanoes, which represent the five different materials that we can use in our Geo Tuner. So let's take a look at it. First of all, we have right here our polluted water vent, which requires bleachstone to be geotuned. Then we have a hydrogen vent right here, which of course requires a bisalite. Next on the list over here is a carbon dioxide geyser, which requires polluted dirt. Then we have a hot polluted oxygen vent, which requires salt. And last but not least, we have a tungsten volcano, which requires refined phosphorus. And that is the same for our cobalt volcano, because all metal volcanoes do require refined phosphorus. So let's make sure I'm actually right about this. Right here, I have five more geotuners, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one, and down here on the bottom, we have a, another geyser, a cool salt slush geyser, and this one I have not analyzed, therefore we cannot select it. That is important to keep in mind, we cannot geotune anything that has not been analyzed. But I'm just going to set all the other five to five different ones right here. There we go. Salt and bleach sound. And then we will need another dude. So here's Bonnie and Bonnie's going to come by and we're going to turn up the speed a little bit. We can see all the different animations coming along here. Yes, Bonnie's hard at work. And now we're just going to send her over here for a minute. Get out of our way. There you go. And now let's take another look right here. We have our geotuner and this one here is set to the carbon dioxide geyser, which I said earlier requires polluted dirt and sure enough it says your insufficient resources polluted dirt times 50. next on the list we have our hydrogen vent and sure enough abyssalite is required next on the list is our tungsten volcano and of course it requires refined phosphorus and then we have our hot polluted oxygen vent which requires salt and last but not least we have our polluted water vent which requires bleach stone so these are the five materials that we can potentially use for our geo tuner and there are no more than that how would you know what to use what for well let's take a quick look Right here I have a chart which I have found on the fandom wiki for Oxygen Not Included which is a wonderful, wonderful website which I highly recommend. You can find the link for it in the description down below and I highly recommend you check it out not only for the Chiu Tuner but for any questions you may have for Oxygen Not Included. I myself use it quite a lot. It is a community driven website so anybody can contribute and it is usually kept up to date just by the community itself which makes it really a wonderful thing. All credit for this chart right here goes to the fandom wiki and once again i would highly recommend that you check him out i guarantee you you will not regret it there's one more thing that i want to talk about today because you may have already noticed one of those input materials is not quite like the others on the left we have our polluted dirt which we can just find anywhere on our asteroid and we can also create it through several different means without a big problem and of course, the same is true for abyssalite. Abyssalite is just laying around. You just dig it up and you have it available. The same goes for bleach stone and of course for salt. All of these materials are usually available and not used for a hell of a lot. But at the same time, right here in the middle, we have refined phosphorus. And that is a little bit more tricky. So let's take a look how we can get refined phosphorus. Because in my opinion, this is the most important one since it is boosting the output of our metal volcanoes. And that is, in my opinion, the most efficient way to use our geotuners. Right here, I have a little geothermal construction that I want to show you guys. Of course, take it with a grain of salt because there are many different ways to do this. This is just one that I came up really quickly and it's really simple to build. So I figured I would show it off to help you guys out with how you can get some refined phosphorus. The entire system starts down here with magma. So we are assuming we're at the bottom of your base, which is where you usually find magma unless you have a frozen core. And we are going to harness the power of this magma with mechanized airlocks. We just dig down 
down, we're gonna plop in some mechanized airlocks. And the only important part is that the second lock from the top is connected to power and also to automation. And when we take a look into our automation overlay, we can see it, it is connected up to a thermal sensor. And of course our thermal sensor is set up to send a green signal if above 250 degrees Celsius. So what exactly does a green signal mean? Well, we can already see it. Of course, it means the door is open and the red signal means the door is closed. And the mechanized airlock has a wonderful ability because if the door is open, it doesn't transfer any heat. We can check this theory pretty easily because our bottom mechanized airlock is at 1816 degrees, the one above it is at 1815 degrees, the open door is at 887 degrees and the one above it is at 257. So we can say with confidence that no heat is being transferred from the bottom to the top or vice versa. Right above our mechanized airlock right here we have steam and we have about 250 kilograms per tile of it because in this case the more steam we have the better it is. More steam provides us with more thermal mass and in this case more thermal mass means it will take a longer time to heat it up but it will also take a longer time to cool it back down which helps out our mechanized airlock right here with maintaining the appropriate temperature in this chamber so what else is going on in here well down here on the bottom we have a weight plate and the weight plate is set up with a green signal if below 300 kilograms so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to melt 300 kilograms at a time and of course the weight plate is connected to our conveyor chute up here on the top so it only opens if we have less than 300 kilograms inside of our steam chamber. Next on the list you're probably wondering what exactly are we dropping into our steam chamber? Well when we take a look above here it is phosphorite and you may know phosphorite as something that we are feeding wheeze words to keep them going or of course also to create fertilizer. Usually you should have plenty of phosphorite laying around that is doing nothing so we can just feed it somehow in my case just up here into our steam chamber where your phosphorite is coming from is of course up to you. And then there are a couple more things that I want to mention about our steam chamber right here because the liquid pump is of course made out of steel otherwise it would overheat and right here I put in a normal tile instead of a insulated tile so we can transfer the heat over here to our thermal sensor a little bit easier. But next let's take a closer look at our phosphoride right here over here in the properties menu we can see the melting point is 243.9 degrees celsius and every time you see a melting point or a freezing point you need to add another three degrees so the actual melting point is 246.9 degrees and we will see that here very shortly so i would say let's play the game and let's melt it right here is our actual temperature and i'm just going to let the game run and we will see what happens gonna give it a little bit more speed 243.9 are reached and nothing has happened and right now we are approaching the 246.9 and we should see it here any second and here we have it yep there it goes and now our liquid pump is sucking it up and transferring it over here to the left while new phosphoride is already dropping in but before we let that happen over here let's take a look what we've got going on on the left side and right here i have a little chamber that is filled with oxygen of course hydrogen would be more efficient but usually oxygen is more than good enough for our purposes so there's no reason to mess around with anything more advanced in here we have some radiant liquid pipes made out of aluminum and of course it is fed by polluted water which is coming from a thermal aqua tuner when our phosphoride melts Else it becomes phosphorus and the phosphorus is coming out of our liquid vent and it just drops down here to the ground. Down here on the bottom we have a conveyor loader, an auto sweeper and just for safety purposes a robo miner. The robo miner is not necessarily needed but for peace of mind I would highly recommend you plop one in here because I have seen a couple of natural tiles down here on the bottom and of course the robo miner would make short work of it since its reach is the entire chamber in every direction. Down here on the bottom I have two normal tiles so if you were not on the very bottom of the map like I'm right now you would just plop in more insulated tiles around here and you would have the same result and these two tiles here just help to transfer the heat a little bit faster out of our phosphorus. So let's let it drop down here and we will see what happens. The first few drops are immediately being converted but the more we put down there it will take a tiny little bit longer. We can see that our tile is now at 8, 9, 10 and even 11 degrees and that is still perfectly fine because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the game and I'm going to select our phosphorus, go to properties and we can see that the freeze point is at 44.1 degrees. Once again, the freeze point you need to remove 3 degrees so as soon as we reach 41.1 degrees our liquid phosphorus will become solid refined phosphorus and that is of course what we are after. So let's watch it happen here shouldn't take too long because the heat is getting sucked out by the polluted water inside of our radiant liquid pipes and very very shortly when I turn up the speed a little bit we will have refined phosphorus 
and of course there it is. Isn't it nice? And now we have a conveyor loader full, our entire rail is full, and we have another 80 and 160 kilograms laying around. One thing I want to mention real quick right here is you can see it, our cobalt volcano has just erupted when we have our cobalt here going around. And look at this here, our two steam turbines, current wattage 755 watts and 686 watts. And that is without the thermal aqua tuna even running. You saw it, it just now turned on. Isn't it crazy? Those extra 250 degrees from our geo tuners are also giving us a nice boost to our power output. But that is all I have for you today. So if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, and of course, comment down below. You know it, I'm always happy to hear from you. And with that, I say thank you and peace.